A lot of people who drank ayahuasca, when they came out from the experience, they shared that they felt like they died or were dying. Did I feel like I was dying? Well, sort of. I did drop into a very deep and black hole of visions that was so permeating that I lost a sense of self. It's like Elsie was not watching anymore. There was just the watching. Who was watching? Uh, no. Just watching. Like I was nothing in this existence. So where was I? What happened to me? Or my body? No idea. My name is Elsie Yang, and this is my ayahuasca journey. <sighs> Disclaimer, this ceremony isn't a rave party, and one shouldn't sign up unless he or she is ready. I strongly believe that the only reason I was able to receive full benefits of the process is because I have six years of spiritual practice under my belt. Prior to drinking this medicine, I've received numerous empowerments from Tibetan Buddhist lamas, and I've been well equipped with mantras that kept my mind grounded throughout the whole experience. I couldn't imagine how I would have come out the other end alive if not for my strong foundation as a Buddhist. Now I can't speak for other people's visions and how they experience dying or the dying of their ego. But I certainly can say that I felt somewhat well prepared during this whole near-death experience. I've been following Tibetan Buddhism as my primary spiritual path for the past six years. And in Tibetan Buddhism, <clears throat> we talk about dying or facing death all the time. In fact, we are asked to visualize ourselves facing death as part of our training. And we are asked to remind ourselves every second that death could come the very next second. So, as a practitioner of Tibetan Buddhism and as part of my studies, I think about the topic around death all the time. So even though the ayahuasca dying experience was frightening to me at first, I was able to remember my guru's teachings and things got rather exciting after that. Because to be honest, it, it was pretty scary. When Elsie Ng stopped existing for sure, she couldn't be found anywhere. There is no such thing as a LCA. Like I said earlier in this video, there was just the watching. But it wasn't LCA who was watching these visions. There was just awareness. So, yes, I probably panicked for a second. I felt sort of hard to breathe, uh, more like scared to breathe, but According to Manger Rinpoche, the experience of non-self is really good news because that in itself is wisdom, the key to liberation, moksha. There are two ways people react to the realization of non-self. One way is reacting with ecstasy and joy. The other way, which was what I experienced, was feeling horrified. But being a Buddhist, I was able to snap out of that fear. So at one point, I centered myself and realized, oh, it's just death. All right, let's go. You see, my Buddhist teachers also taught me methods to use death when it happens as an opportunity to reach enlightenment or to teleport to pure lands and escape the cycle of reincarnation. 
My teacher also gave me protectors such as the six-armed Mahakala. So stormy, but so cute. Because you see, when we die, we'll go into this bardo state. That's an intermediate state between death and rebirth. And six-armed Mahakala being so cute. If I can remember to call out to him, he will come rescue me from limbo. So I got all these wonderful things to look forward to at time of death. Attaining enlightenment, immigrate to pure land, and escape the matrix forever ever. And I got all these Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and protectors I can call upon to shepherd me. So the ayahuasca dying experience was a great fire drill because I came in with a very clear motive. I wanted to experience it so I can apply my knowledge in a simulation that's way better than in a dark and obnoxiously deafening nightclub, which has also been somewhat of a dying experience for me. So I pray to lots of deities, Amitabha, Avalokiteshwara, the list goes on and on. And during the ceremony, Buddha heard my prayer and he led me into his thoughts, into his perspective. You see, now I know why all Buddha statues are smiling. He's smiling because he is in utter bliss. This bliss comes from becoming one with all that is divine, source, the truth, or in Tibetan Buddhism, we call it emptiness. And Buddha is in harmony with everything that emerges from emptiness. Buddha is the most chilled guy ever. He doesn't discriminate and he's happy for everyone, regardless of their paths or religious backgrounds. Am I forever enlightened from this ayahuasca experience? No, because while I was on it, it was beautiful. I was indeed there. But once the medicine wore off, I got dropped down to earth again. I had post-ceremony blues for many days and I felt quite broken because once you got a taste of that soaring high frequency, it's so damn depressing to be back to our everyday life frequency. But even though it was no shortcut to enlightenment, it gave me temporary access to the truth, to my Buddha nature. This helps in strengthening my faith in Buddha's teachings.